Well, you haven't seen us in a while. Welcome back to Face to Facts. I am Nick Face. It's nice to see you all once again. We're sorry we haven't been with you for a while. It's been very busy for us, and it is finally time to sit down, talk, debate, and discuss all the lovely things happening in our Boston sports areas. We're going to lead off our show first by introducing our two guests that are with us today. We have Tom Smith. Welcome back, Tom. Thank you. Thank you. Phil Healy. Welcome back again. Jam-packed edition here because we are covering all four sports teams right now for you. Each and every single sports team right now has something noteworthy going on. We want to start it off right now and lead it off with our Boston Bruins. Why are we leading it off with the Bruins? In my opinion, remember this is face to facts, I feel the Bruins are the hottest team that we have right now in the area. The Bruins are just about ready to wrap up their regular season here of play, and it looks like they'll be heading into the playoffs on the up and up. Let's talk with Tom first about what our overall thoughts are on the Bruins team right now. Uh, they're going to make an outstanding run in the playoffs, I hope anyway. Um, hopefully they can finish off the season in first place in the division. Otherwise, they're going to have a tough first-round matchup with Toronto. Mm -hmm. uh, otherwise, they'll be playing either Florida or Philly. So. We'll see, I think. But if they get first in the division, I think they will have a very good run in the playoffs. Okay. Phil, have you seen anything of the Bruins and um, been able to at least take a glance at how the season has been so far? It's been pretty surprising to me. Yeah, no, I, and like I told you guys off here right before, I am... Uh, yeah, he's the hoop expert. <laughs> I, yeah, or I, like, yeah. It, like the Bruins, I one of those guys who hockey never attacked as... A white gentleman in New England. Hockey weirdly never uh, stuck with me. It's not that I don't like it. I actually, yeah. playoff hockey is actually amazing to watch amazing. no matter what. It's a, yeah. And as a uh, friend of my father's once told me, it's like a whole different uh, season. It, it is. It yeah. truly is. Yeah. And I, I'm excited because like, none of us, I mean, who really thought this would be happening? Did you? I had, I did not have any. Ex I mean, I thought they were going to, but then at the start, after the start of the season, I was like, there's no way. Yeah. No way, right here. Did not think that this was possible. I thought that the Bruins really didn't get enough in return with Sagan, got enough in return with some other players that got traded, from Dougie Hamilton all the way down. Um, I, I didn't think it was possible. And boy, oh boy, we've been wrong. We've been spoiled all season with one of the most incredible runs I've seen in a long time yeah. for a hockey team. Um, one of the things that I think is pretty cool about the Bruins is we've seen such a drastic change at the top with the coach. That was Claude Julien, who was gone after last season. Uh, we had Bruce Cassidy come in. Why has it been such a different atmosphere for the Bruins from playing? Has uh, he added that much of a different style of hockey? It's, it's the style he's added. It's the development of the young guys that have come up through his coaching system and mm -hmm. when he was down in Providence, um, which is why there's been a lot of talk as to him being a finalist for the Jack Adams Award for being the best coach in the NHL. I think he should. I, I would love for that to happen, but with the way that Vegas has been playing this year, I, I think it's going to be Vegas' head coach. What happens in Vegas stays in oh, Vegas. It's so weird. I keep forgetting that Vegas has a team, and they're yeah. really good. Yeah. When I was like, out there, I was out there a couple weeks yeah. back, and... Boy, it, it, there's a lot of buzz about that hockey team. Yeah. A lot of buzz. And, there's an, and it's an expansion team. Yeah, exactly. This is basically year one for them, and they're already Stanley Cup caliber. Wow, is that, I mean, is that, oh, yeah. is that yeah. real? Oh, yeah, that's real? legitimate. And, I mean, I may be wearing my Predators hat tonight, and mm -hmm. I, I'm all, or today. I'm only wearing it because they won the President's Trophy last night, having the best record in the league. Um, we've seen two games this week that have not gone so well for the Bruins. It's kind of been... Um, couple of their worst games they've had of the season, which is shocking to even say it. Tuesday, they played against the Tampa Bay Lightning, who they're chasing back and forth for first place in the Atlantic Division, and they lost by a score of 4 to nothing. The next game that they had up on their schedule was against the Florida, uh, Florida Panthers, and there's another team that's in the hunt. I think they're a wild card team right now, looking to fight and get themselves into the playoff run. They lost again 3-2. to two. I can't tell you the last time the Bruins lost two games in a row. It's, uh, it's only happened, uh, actually, that was three games in a row. They lost the game before uh, they played Tampa, too. Okay. Um, which is the first time since November that yep. that's happened. But they've only lost two games in a row three times this season. Right. 
And actually, that Sunday game, they did lose in overtime. Yeah. So it really is three losses in a row for them. So is that a concern? No, I think part of it is um, a lot of the players that were injured are coming back, trying to get back into the game. So that's uh, kind of been part of the struggle. Yep. Um, they're also trying to, I think most of the star players are trying to ease back on the game right now just to rest up for the playoffs so they don't get hurt. Yep. Uh, so that's another part of it. Um, but I think uh, it's not a concern. Uh, Florida's still four points out of playoff contention right now like behind Philly. So mm -hmm. Florida doesn't really have much of a chance even after winning last night. Mm -hmm. um, but Philly also won last night. So they have to... Uh, win their next two games to have any chance to make Florida the playoffs. Florida does. Yeah, okay. Florida does. The Bruins have two more games in their season to go. They have a game Saturday that's against um, the Senators, and they also have a game Sunday, which is a makeup against the yep. Panthers again. So Florida and Boston are the only two teams that have two games left in Do the season. Do the Bruins basically control their own destiny right here? Yep. Okay, so yep. If basically if they win the next two, they're pretty much locked in, Yep. hopefully. They could get a little help from Tampa. Tampa plays uh, Friday night. They play, um, so that will give them a one-point lead, win, lose, or draw, basically, correct? It'll give them a two-point lead if they win. Two-point lead, two if, they point lead if they win. If they lose, zero stays the same. If they tie, they get the one. So, Tampa, we hope you lose. <laughs> Can't say it any better but than that. At least, at least we're not sitting here as Boston fans, crossing our fingers, hoping, sitting on the edge of our seats, hoping that Boston makes the playoffs this year. At least we know they're in. Correct. Now, let's talk about the season that we've seen so far. We've seen a lot of great things from this team. There's almost, in a way, impossible to say which game was the best, which player has been the best on the team, but we'll try our best to throw a few names out here so you can have some sort of an idea on how we feel on certain players. Let's start from looking at the rookies. There's been a lot of different guys that have come up this season that have really exceeded expectations. Do you have a particular rookie that you like that thinks is basically the rookie of the year on the Bruins? Well, I'm, I wasn't surprised at how well Charlie McAvoy came out at the beginning of the season throughout the entire season. Yep. Uh, I really thought it was going to be a tough choice between Danton Heinen and Jake DeBrusque, yep. but uh, Heinen kind of slowed down after the month of February, yep. and DeBrusque stayed hot except for getting injured a couple times. Yep. Um, but I would definitely have to say Jake DeBrusque, even though, you know, Ryan Donato's come in the last five or six games and yep. it's been f fabulous for them. Now, Phil, here's a guy, Donato, who is the former son of uh, Ted Donato, who used to be um, a hockey player for the Bruins. Not former. He is the son. Excuse yeah. me. Um, could have disowned him. We know that. That's right. We could have, but we don't because we uh, like I him. I doubt it. Yeah, yeah. Um, my former father over there. Um, yeah. <laughs> Donato has completely taken over the steam here for the Bruins with being a, a complete force out there on the ice. Shows a lot of poise, shows a lot of skill. Imagine be, playing for Harvard rookie, this year. Like all these rookies. Playing for Harvard this year, up. and he was in the Olympics as well, yeah. and getting thrown into the action midseason in a playoff yeah. run, and... I think he's got six goals right now. Oh, yeah, yeah. so he was the guy who was thrown in last year at the end? Or? No, last no, year, year, right now. McElroy he's only played, out. like, 15 games. Oh, wow. No, not even. Not less than even. 10. Less than 10, and they he's already up to about up. six goals this season. Wow. The kid can play. Yep. And that's, he's been a big reason why, with Bergeron getting hurt for as long as he had, Rick Nash being down, Backus out from suspension from a few things, that's one of the reasons why the Bruins were able to go on such a great run. They have so much depth on their team. Yeah. The depth is incredible. Oh, great. And if you have this much depth go, getting into the playoff picture and going you know, far and beyond, we hope, I mean, you have a great legitimate chance. Oh. That and two outstanding goaltenders. Yep. Yeah, actually. The Rask the and Kudobin yeah. have, been, have had very good seasons. I remember at the beginning of the season, there was, yeah. there was a juggle for uh, the job. Who's it going to be? Yeah. 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 Who's it going to be? Yeah. And Tuka, Tuka rose, Tuka rose yeah. and, and definitely took his game back to the level that was expected for a lot of fans. Um, my rookie of the year is Charlie McAvoy. Charlie McAvoy was somebody that I have... I feel that was able to continue to have Zdeno Chara continue to play play his game. He got another contract as well, Phil, so he'll be back For like again. another year, right? Yeah. 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 McAvoy has been able to give the Bruins a great defensive stop and has been able to do, in my eyes, an amazing job with preventing 
a lot of different goals and stuff from happening. Hmm. Um, his force on the ice, he can take over. Um, he's definitely one of the up and up superstars that there are for the NHL. Yeah, he's, so, he's proven that. It's nice to have Char him back too. He's proven that once Char retires, that they're all set yep. at the back end. Yep. So that's somebody that I really enjoyed. If Donato was probably here for the entire run of the season, I'd probably pick Donato. Um, McAvoy is my whole pitcher star. My right now star for Rookie of the Year is Donato. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely from there. Um, biggest surprise. We know that it's a surprise at how well they've done this season, but which player in particular has really risen their game up to a new level that you didn't think was going to happen? It's a tough question because there's so many, so many things to look at. I think Brandon Carlo was my biggest surprise. I, um, I did not have a lot of good feelings about him at the beginning of the year after the season that he had last year. He was, wasn't that great last year. Mm -hmm. Um, but he came in this year, really stepped up his game, really uh, moved the puck well, got net, uh, pucks on net, mm -hmm. uh, played well defensively, and then he went down With the a couple, injury. Yep. few games bro ago. Broken fibia out for the season. Yep. Um, so they've lost a little bit of depth there on the defense, but because there's so many spare parts, I don't think his loss is going to be felt that much. No. no. So they, at least they can get away with it. Anybody out there that you thought was a big surprise? Uh, well, I'll go with Tom. Pitt. Yes, no, Tom I, had a good Yeah, pick. actually, I don't even... Uh, How about Chara? Chara? Well, yeah, actually, to be honest... The rebirth of Zidane Chara. Well, would you... 40 is the up? new 30. Yeah, well, would you chalk it up also to McAvoy being I would. like... I think I paired up with McAvoy and the other youth that's helped establish mm. Chara's game. He's more of a... He doesn't have to be that superstar right now. He's like the father figure. He's out there. Come here, guys. You go do your thing. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll be out there if you need me. So him just being like another, you know, presence on the ice has helped. And I'll also add, uh, and I apologize if I butcher his name, but the backup goalie, uh, Kadobin. 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 Yeah. Kadobin was a big surprise. Yeah. That he helps. Held him, he held them intact for a while. Too. When Rast doesn't play, you feel com still comfortable yep. with, with, with Kadobin yeah, being in absolutely. that and doing a nice job. My surprise of the year, you might like this one. It's Tori Krug. Tori Krug, to me was somebody that a lot of people like to complain about him a lot. Maybe he wasn't the best of, you know, defensive skill, skilled wise player. He's had a fantastic season with scoring the puck, with passing, getting getting everything done that people thought wasn't going to really be much. I think Krug has been a big reason why Again, the defense has been as solid as it has, and why we've had so many goals. Well, scored. that that and, and he's, he's an offensive he's, defenseman, and that's what you want to see. He stepped up when when the occasion has come, and even though he's been struggling through an injury the last few last ten games, he's still he's trying. Still to, out he's there, still stepping he's up battling. and playing. So he's having a very good season, and he's definitely been worth the money yeah. that the well, Bruins have thrown out. He's one. Of, he's one of those players where I've seen. I, I see that he has a game to him, and that it's, it just hasn't been developed yet. And I think that's another reason why Bruce Cassidy was is a better uh, coach right now for this team than yep. Claude Julian, who is on his verge probably of getting fired. Well, Most yeah, with the, the Canadians, Canadians yeah. have been absolutely well, are dreadful. They, for a uh, long time now. They're not making the playoffs. Oh, no. no they're, oh, they've no. been out long for a long time. Oh, that's unfortunate because they were a powerhouse <clears> team <throat> they were. last year. It, it's, it stunk for them, though, because they lost Carey Price a oh. bunch of times throughout the season, so that was yeah. part of the reason. Yeah. Um, Arguably but, one of the best in the league. Yeah. 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 Definitely, yeah. definitely in the top ten. But that was I, just I can't, yeah, I can't complain because yeah. we're, we're – the, the Bruins' playoff struggles have mostly been because of either Montreal, mm -hmm. Ottawa, or um, Chicago. And all three of those teams are out of the playoffs. So That's pretty cool. Yeah. It's pretty cool to think of that. Um, top star of the season. A lot of names. I, I would Who are you going to go with? I would have to go with Brad Marchand. Uh, yep. Okay. I would have to go with Brad Marchand because he stepped up when it's counted. He... Even when he's when he wasn't playing and he came back after a few missing a few games, his game was right back where it, he left it off. Um, even with Bergeron out, he people didn't think he was gonna do that well. He Wrong. just kept playing, <laughs> just kept playing, yep. kept staying hot. Um, and on the on another note, for a, a big surprise too was Pasternak. He was he's a guy that you know everybody knows his game's there. 
but this year it really showed how good of a player he was. 35 goals now this season? Yeah. All, Close to they it, maybe, were, yep. They were the first team in the NHL to have three players on the same line to have 30-plus goals. Yep. Wow. Yep. Only the set, only two teams And have that's three with players. Bergeron missing a month. Right. A little bit and more time, Bergeron too. Bergeron still got, reached yeah. 30 goals a couple games ago, so... I'm surprised for you. I mean, top star, excuse me. Oh, no, star. I actually would echo, and I'm not just yeah. saying it because I'm um, no. <laughs> lack of knowledge. No, but All three of us are going to be in no, agreement I, I, on this. Because yeah. he's also a guy who, through his history, and I think this is like his seventh year now, which for me, well, yeah, it's got to be. It's like his seventh yeah. year, right? I remember when he was rookie season and they won the cup. Yep. And But he's always he's a been winner. a winner. Yeah, he's always been a scrapper. Yep. But I, I don't mean that in, like, he's compensating. I mean, like, he legit knows well, the angles. Let's just say the NHL loves him because <laughs> well, they get pretty good checks from him he, after a lot of fixed up. He really yeah. fixed up his game this year. Yeah, yeah. but they also know him. It's yeah. like, yeah, whatever, Brad. We yeah. know what you were doing. Yeah. And it's, but he does those little things yeah. that, that, that need to happen. Well, they, credit, they credit and kudos or, to uh, him for being able to fix, you know, being that, you know, dirty player. that yeah. He's got that name that on it for him, so... He's had a better year this year with being able to clean up some things on that end. So. Well, he got lucky a couple games ago with that cross check too. Yes, to he the did. Face. He got yeah. lucky. Yep, because that was a dirty play there. Um, the only other statistic I'm going to throw at you with this Brad Marchand thing is five overtime goals this season. That's kind of that's nuts, huge. Man. Okay, that what? that shows me superstar right there. Elevates the game, gets it done when it matters. And Martian has been able to do that. Yes, once again, five overtime goals. This guy's gotten to that got. point where as soon as it goes into overtime and the puck's on Marshawn's stick, you're expecting. He just goal. explodes in the three on three, mm. and that's what I love about that overtime hockey feel is when you see that three on three. If you put Martian on the ice, he'll make a move. You know, well, some, that's, something that's like that's that the to best, get it done. That's the best three on three group is the crew, Bergeron, Marshawn line. Yep, yep, they're great on the three on three, and we hope to see that a little bit more as the playoffs go on here. Um, hopefully not as many overtime. Hopefully playoff. not. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 could, I can't I could, can complain about that. I can, it's I exciting, could, uh, but hard. I could use a nice win. Well. And it's only five on five in playoff oh, hockey okay. too. So yeah, there's no three on three. That's right. Oh, so weird. it stays five on five. All right. Yeah. So watch for that. That it's a little bit different of a game. It's pretty much the same game. Yeah. yeah. So you just you're watching full periods of hockey until someone scores, basically. Right. Yeah. Right. Now. Best chance at winning the cup. We've got to look at some other teams here to think about who we feel has a legitimate shot here to take home the Stanley Cup. All Let's right. go back to Tom. Who do you think? So, yes, uh, when I did the sports management class uh, in, in Needham that we have, um, we made our own, we made our bracket, and we ended up having Boston and Columbus in the Eastern Conference Final okay. round, and Vegas and Nashville, which I think everybody would agree with that in the I Western would Conference Final. Okay. Um, as hot as Minnesota is, I don't think they have the team to make it okay. past Vegas. I think is who they would end up playing if that was what happened. Mm -hmm. um, so, and with the history of the NHL and teams winning the President's Trophy, not winning the Cup. I And the way that the season's been going this year, I think it's going to end up being Boston and Vegas in the finals. Um, again, depending on who Boston has in the first round, it's it could be a tough one. It could be an easy one. Mm -hmm. Either way, the playoffs are tough anyway, no matter who you play, but some can be easier than others. Um, but I wouldn't really be upset either way with who wins the Cup if it was Vegas and Boston. Okay. Being we, a hockey we, fan. We won't ask who's going to win the cup because we still have a long ways to yeah. go until yeah. that. So those are our predictions. That is what your prediction is for what you feel for um, the finals, which is, again, Vegas Knights, Boston Bruins. You're going to echo the same? I will yeah. uh, <laughs> defer. Okay. I'm not, yeah. You're going to defer? I'll defer. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I caught the pass. Yes, yeah, so there you go. Yes, I exactly. caught the pass. So, yeah, what, what about you? The yeah. pass. The pa yeah. That's right. What about me? Um, I think the Bruins have a great shot here. I mean, from what we've seen so far, they're definitely one of the most dominant teams in that Eastern Conference right now. Um, it's getting going to get past teams like a Washington, a Columbus. Um, even don't don't discount the Panthers and don't discount Tampa, folks. I mean, that I, I think the Bruins are going to face Tampa to get to something. I do, um, and that's something that I feel pretty good about. But, again, we just saw Tampa come out, go 4 nothing. Whether the Bruins cared about that game or not, we don't know. 
The Bruins have had the upper hand against Tampa all season long, yeah. basically. So I think it would be a great series no matter what it is. I like, I like the Bruins and I like Vegas. You know, I'm biased towards what Tom says here. I think they have the most talent. I think Minnesota is good, but I don't think that they're good enough. They got hot at a good time, but they're yep. just not, they just don't have the team to beat the teams that they're going to be and facing. And echoing what Tom said also on the President's Cup trophy winner, which was the Nashville Predators, I think it continues. I think we'll see another team that wins the President's Cup not win a well, Stanley Cup. How many Cup. years has that been? I think it's been the entire. It makes oh it God. seem League. like who cares if you win? Yeah, exactly. The but Easter it's get still number crazy one seed. That it no is crazy. One has ever like won a, a cup when you? It's like you give it your all. Well, the Bruins won it back in thirteen. And they didn't. Yeah, they got ousted in the first round, right? No, they the lost second. in the final. They Stanley lost in the cup oh, finals. Finals to Chicago. Uh, Chicago. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. They lost to Chicago. So, we'll see what happens, folks. Continue mm. to watch the Bruins. We're excited about it, as I hope you are out there. And, again, the season will end on Sunday. Playoffs will know the schedule, basically. The Bruins week. season will end on the Sunday. Bruins. The NHL season ends on Saturday. That's right. Mm. The Bruins will end on Sunday. NHL ends on Saturday. Then we should have a first game by Thursday of next week, right? April 11th is when the playoffs start. Okay. I believe I, the Bruins the are most Wednesday, likely yeah. going to be starting on the 12th. Okay. Most likely. That is a Tuesday. We don't know. That's a Tuesday, correct? That is a Thursday. That's the 12th a Thursday. 12th is a Thursday. Okay. 11th Wednesday. is a Wednesday. Okay. Let's change gears. We're going to stay in the TD Garden. Why not? Here but we, we got to go to the green team. we got to go to the Celtics. And unfortunately, we had some breaking news yesterday that alerted a lot of Celtics fans and not the greatest of news. Kyrie Irving will be out for the rest of the season. He is getting uh, surgery on that knee, and he will be shut down. Um, obviously, that puts a damp uh, damper into plans on what a lot of folks thought. The Celtics had a legitimate shot at wrecking with a... Um, a championship. We're going to go to Phil. Phil is like our basketball guy. So I just want to hear your overall thoughts on the news from yesterday and what it what it means. Well, I am, thank you, I am yeah. a basketball guy. The, who knows, yeah. we'll see. We'll call you the um, expert, yeah, at least well, on this show. More so than yeah. hockey, I will say. Um, and thank you, Tom, for letting me jump on the bandwagon. Hey, for you know, I do what I can. Yeah, and I'm actually excited that Minnesota is relevant in the hockey world again. Mm. I think that's actually pretty great. Yeah, they uh, just squeaked in. So. Yeah, it was stars, man. And then they moved to Dallas, and they, well, mm -hmm. anywho. Uh, yeah, no, I, of course, like, this puts a damper on everything. Uh, it, we, you kind of knew within the last month that it was either, he was either going to shut it down, or they, you're going to have him at, like, half to three-fourths strength. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I would take, obviously, a three-fourths strength Kyrie over nothing, but yeah. in, you know, risk of jeopardizing his career or that knee further down the line, you know, shut it down. Mm -hmm. Because you already have, you kind of were, kind of was, the car, every, writing was on the wall when five minutes into the season when yeah. Gordon Hayward went down, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. And he's not, by the way, he's not coming back, but he is progressing nicely. He he'll, is progressing. He'll be there at the beginning of next season. Yes, he will be. Uh, barring if we uh, have a Kawhi Leonard or anyone else uh, on our team. Mm -hmm. Uh, which I kind of hope we keep paying. Anthony Davis. Anthony Davis, who knows? I mean, there's a lot of, a lot of rumors swirling around. Mm -hmm. But I do, and Nick, you and I chat about this briefly yep. uh, before we uh, got on air. Yeah, I, I still think they can make a, a run into the Eastern Conference. I, I uh, feel the same. Uh, I don't know what you feel, Tom. Around, but. Yeah. I mean, I think, they're, I, 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 mean, I think they're like the Bruins. I think they have a lot of good resilience in them. Um, I, they've won a lot of tough games where most people expected them not to win. Um, again, I'm not really a big basketball guy, but I feel like they they could make it far in the playoffs. Mm -hmm. um, whether it is the the conference finals or it is even the finals, who knows? Because you never know what's going to happen. Mm -hmm. um, but I think they could make a very good run in the playoffs. What I'm looking at here is the amount of depth that the Celtics have. And let's take a look at it from breaking it down from the start. We had Gordon Hayward go down five minutes into the season, as Phil said. You have Marcus Smart go out with a thumb at one point. Now it's, uh, what was that? What's Marcus Smart's problem? No, yeah, he, and he, a couple Still the of thumb. Times. Well, he had, so he had a hand. And a thumb, and I think there was something else with. I know the first arms. injury he had was <laughs> from yeah, stupidity. I think it was like the shoulder. The shoulder now. Yeah. Then we have, you know, Terry Rozier's out a little bit. He's banged up. You have Play Al Horford him. banged up a little bit. You have 
Um, the, the, your, your mainstays have been Jalen Brown and, and Jason Tatum. Marcus Morris has been out He's a been lot. Banged up a little, yeah. Shane Larkin out from a good guy from on, on oh, depth yeah, has been right, out yeah. from stuff too. How, how many pieces can they lose and still continue to get it done? Daniel Tice you have after to, the season. That's yeah. right. You have to give credit to Stevens. And no... No offense on um, Bruce Cassidy from the Bruins. I think he's been wonderful with them. But the Celtics are not the same team without Brad Stevens. They are not. Brad Stevens has won this game, won this team single-handedly probably about 15 to 20 extra games than probably deserved because of the way he coaches. Well, you could say that about any of the any of the coaches in New England. I mean, if, really? if the Patriots didn't have Bill Belichick, where would they be? Uh, winning a Super Bowl last year. Well, I mean, you don't get there. Yeah, sure. I'll go with that. But you, I don't know. Don't but would they have even there. made it to yeah. the Super Bowl if Belichick wasn't the coach? I don't know. I'm not big on Bill right now. I'm just no. Like, I mean, and you, that's have, a you have a reason for to be. Day. Yeah. You have a reason to be. Um, I think that Stevens really is the best coach in the NBA. I think he gets the most out of what he's dealt with, the cards that he's dealt with from stuff. Um, well, he proved it back when he was coaching Butler. And won I just love mm-hmm. the fact that they have this next man up mentality where they'll get the job done even if they have to go to somebody from the D-League and get the win. I, I look back at the win they had against Toronto, which was a couple Saturdays ago. Yeah. Holy moly, was that an amazing game. Yeah, it was great. It Their was big great star game. was Rosier. I mean... And he's a guy who... I love that guy. Oh, he's not just to awesome. Like. What's not, not to like? He's, he's, he's not afraid to go to a basket. Yep. Not afraid to take a big shot. And he, uh, he also, he can handle the ball like no other. Yep. He's, uh, it's, yeah, it, he's a great ball handler. And I'm sure... And you say Brad Stevens. I will even... I'll throw something else in there. I think they are not as good as they are without the presence of Kyrie. Yes. And I think he's a guy who's, he has a winner's mentality, whatever that means. Sometimes that's BS. Yeah. But there's a degree of how he can handle himself and how he wants his team. He wants it to be his team. And I don't mean that in a selfish way. He wants them to know, like, this is all we can do to win. This is like, he's he wants to be the new Paul See what I like about, what I like about Kyrie, and and I, I like that. I like that example of the Paul Pierce. You're right on that. Because Kyrie, to me, isn't one of those in your face, you know, look at me, I'm wonderful kind of player. He's not an Isaiah Thomas. He's not one of those people. No, and that's what I like a lot, you know. You all know my feelings on what I sure. on Isaiah. Back the Brinks truck up. Well, Isaiah, you're not getting anything from the Brinks truck now. I mean, that's, um, it sucks. I, honestly, man, he did a lot for this He team. did do a lot, and I'm not he taking that away. Yeah, you are, a little bit. A little bit. <laughs> a little bit. Well, I just don't walk can't. away from your point. You just said. My point that I, I've stressed so much is there's a right way and a wrong way of carrying yourself. And he didn't carry himself the way I'm comfortable with, like a Tom Brady, a Gronk, those types of guys do. Oh. There, there's, a, there's a thing about being humble, and then there's, a, then there's a way of going about yourself that makes you like Mr. Wonderful. Well, listen, like he, uh, he was pretty humble for a while. Like he, he mentioned stuff like Brink's truck once mm. and some other stuff. It's like, yeah, he should get paid because he helped carry that team quite a bit. And also... I, like, this is one of the things I do kind of hate in this in the basketball world uh, when people are like, hey, you know, uh, be humble, do whatever. It's like, yeah, I guess. I mean, Bird wasn't humble. Bird was a <laughs> was an ass. Yeah, that's true. Bird was he one was. of the biggest jerks, yep. and that that's part of why I love him. Yeah. But he also could back it up, and I think, and I feel bad for Isaiah, but I do. I'll agree. I'll I'll buy into your uh, humbleness on this. If they can back up their trash and all their stuff, yeah. that's cool. I mean, winning cures all. Sure does. But also, like, a winning attitude. You know, like, Kyrie brings that in. Who knows? Yeah, well, Isaiah poison the well. And that, that's know. what I liked about it, too, with, with the whole Kyrie thing, is that he is a winner. Hmm. And he decided to go about winning in a whole different way by not wanting to be on the Cavs anymore. He wanted to be the star. And kudos to him for coming over to the Celtics, jumping on the bandwagon, and having such a great season like he's like he had. You know, I hope there's more of that to come with Kyrie here. My other point I want to ask you both about with Kyrie here is, is the whole thing on the knee. Should fans and people out there who are who are big believers here in the Celtics be concerned about this knee with surgery? Sure. Um, sure. 
I mean, yeah, there should be. Is this a big deal, basically? There, Is this going to hurt should, his there career? Should be some, there should be some concern, but there have been athletes in all other sports that have had successful surgeries mm -hmm. on their knee and have had outstanding careers afterwards. Okay. Um, and with being in Boston, having some of the best medical um, help, or, yeah, medical help in the in the, in the in world, the, in basically. The, yeah, yeah, in, yeah, the, in the, the world. world yeah. uh, there, there really shouldn't be a lot of concern. Yes, there should be some concern, but mm. not to the point where it's like, well, if he goes down again with it, he's his season's over. Correct. Or his career is over. Um, I don't think it would get. I don't think it'll get to that point. I, I think there's just uh, there's there should be a little concern, but not too much. Phil, here's a point I want to ask you, too, here, is the Celtics were well aware when they signed Kyrie about the knee problems that were going on with him. You know, this knee injury happened from, I think, the 2015 finals. Yeah, he's, he's had a history of injuries. Why wasn't this knee taken care of during the start of the season and then have him come back at a point where he was healthy enough to be able to not have this knee be any, any problem? Well, I, th I mean, like, they're all professional athletes. So they all have something that is wrong with them. Yes, they do. No matter, That's and a good like point. whether you whether you look at you know hockey, football, soccer, uh, basketball, people are always playing with something, mm -hmm. and it's just a matter of like how much how grading is it on you? It's always a pain tolerance, and you know I imagine that like oh, isn't the knee is what the knee is going to be? And I'm sure after surgery, it's it'll be better, and whatever is taken off that edge that was there is the yeah. same, you know, because. He's going to be, what was it, 26 or 27? Or no, he's going to be like He's going to be 26. Six? I think he's 25. So, I mean, like, it's not, that's, I mean, for me, the 35-year-old man who's just kind of like, I can't. Yeah. If I'll, I'll break a hip if I try right. to move like him. Right. But, you know, and he'll be there. You probably have another good five or six years with him. And yep. who knows? Like, what, and, it, and I'll, I'll bring into the equation Anthony Davis. Yeah. Because he's a guy who has some injury troubles. Yes. And one of the bigger things, uh, or the bigger packages or rumors, is put like Tatum or Brown and a pick or someone else or Horford in there to get Anthony Davis here. And it's like, Tatum, you know, knock on wood, I, he's been pretty healthy and I haven't heard anything about him being like, no. a, uh, like a Fultz or like nope. anyone else either. on Philly who are wafer thin yep. or just like just ready to go yep i think jason tatum has been as healthy as any of the players on the team this year mm. him and brown have been rock solid rock solid mm. um back to the anthony davis point or a kylie yeah. kai what do you say oh. kylie leonard and oh, oh Kawhi, yeah. Kawhi. Kawhi, excuse me i do love saying do the celtics yeah. part <laughs> with some of the players they have on their team to get one of those two superstars and yes i'm saying superstars because i think that's those are the only players like a Tatum or a Brown that I would give a thought about trading to mm. get somebody like that. What do you think? Well, they talk about Horford, too. Yes, they do and talk like about Horford. It, like, there's a whole bunch of things, and there are a bunch of assets, because I don't know if you guys are familiar with because I think we got uh, the Philly Laker pick, which the yes, Lakers we do. are like, I think they have like 33 or 34 wins. Yeah. Which actually, and they're like nine, no, they're like 12th or 13th in the West, but they're not... And maybe they get a top 10, you get a top 10 pick out of it. Right. And that's kind of looking how it is right now. You right. You package that, Tatum, Brown, or one or the other. Like, I wouldn't mind giving, because I love the Spurs and I love Pop. Mm -hmm. So I'm like one of those guys, one of those jerks, one of those yeah. purists. Uh, I like the Spurs. Yeah, I like yeah. who does what's, yeah. I mean, people think they're boring, but I don't know. I, I like I like Ginobili. I think he's a, like that Argentinian can uh, like play basketball all day, and I'd be mm -hmm. enthralled. And they are like dinosaurs now. So, I mean, they are like, getting older. Yep. Yeah, no, I mean, Ginobili, I think, is like 39. Yeah, I think. yeah, he is. And Parker's up there, too. I keep forgetting they're in the mix. And what's his name, um, who they got from Trailblazers a couple years back? Uh, LaMarcus Aldridge? Is LaMarcus that? Aldridge is the other name. He's like there. 32 now, which yep. isn't. So, they uh, have some age. They have some age. Yeah. But they, it, they like playing with age, though. I mean, they do look, like how long, with age. look how long Tim Duncan stayed there. Yeah, no, and I actually was, and that was the saddest day for me because he and Duncan left yeah. out like a whimper, but one, probably one of the greatest power forwards ever to play the game. I, easily I agree. one of the top five. I agree. And yeah, so I guess to the point. Yes, giving up uh, Tatum and or Brown, I would give up. I love Kawhi Leonard too, but he's another guy who uh, both Davis and Leonard have 
injury uh, are injury prone. They do, but they have high up. It's a high upswing. Yeah, it just and if would you give up Tatum and Brown and a pick or Horford? I hear Horford being thrown in there, and I, I actually do like Horford. But if you could get like Kawhi Leonard, and what was it, and not have Horford, and you can just put Mon- keep Monroe, get another big guy in there. If you Bain. can part with. If you can part with one basketball. of Brown, one of Tatum, Horford, and a pick, I do it. Yeah. I'm not giving up Brown and Tatum. I, I just you won't. You might have to. I, yeah, I know. I, I don't want to either. I won't. I won't. And I like I'm not building a team from within. Danny is. Danny works his mm-hmm. magic. But just from what I've seen, I think I part more with Brown mm. because I think Tatum's going to be a superstar. Yeah, I like Brown is good. I Very like good. He seems like a nice guy, too. He seems like a well-rounded... And he gets it, and I like him. Yeah. But I think that I only part with one of those guys. Yeah. But I give them one of the picks. And it's just because I, I feel more attached to Tatum from what I've been able to see him do this season. A little it, bit more love for Tatum than Brown, but it's, it's, it's this close, folks. Can I address, can yeah. I address the love for Tatum? Because I'm with it. I'm not against it. Yeah. As... People online will say I'm against it, and maybe it's just me being paranoid, and it is. Yeah. Because I'm a paranoid weirdo. But Tatum is amazing. He's like a silent killer. Yeah. He has that instinct in there, and I think Brown does too, but I think Brown holds back a little. I do too. And, yep, I, I can see that. And I think Tatum, once he, like, like just bl- blossoms up, like this, the playoffs now, hmm. if they let Tatum loose, I think this is a great opportunity with Kyrie out and all these, you know, we're not, yeah, hey, we're not going to win it. Let's. Unleash the beast. Screw it, exactly. Let's yeah. see what happens. Unleash the beast. Who do we got in there? Semi Ojale? Great. Yeah. Throw him out there. Yep. Give me Tatum. Yep. I mean, and that's. Hey, yeah. they'll get the job done. Yeah, they'll get the job done. It's so, a body, baby. Overall, our, our feelings here is yes, it's changed our opinions here a little bit of what we feel the Celtics will do. They're still good, folks. Don't worry about that. Mm. They're still in the playoffs. They could be bouncing the first round. They though. could be. Yeah. We'll just have to see. But Washington, we're hoping we're hoping that they can at least get to the second, third round ish, right around there, and um, you know they'll be healthy next season. Hopefully, make a good run at this. I would love to play Philly. I would love to play Philly. That would be fun. That would be good. That would be fun. We had an opening day this past week. Uh, there was the Boston Red Sox. They started their season for the first time since 1912, before April 1st. Wow. It's amazing there. So the Sox started out their season. We've seen about a week's worth of play. I think everybody here has seen a little bit of something from the Red Sox right now. So let's share our lovely opinions with them, Dom. Um, I like the starting pitching. The starting pitching has been ph- phenomenal so far. Um, big surprise was Brian Johnson. Mm-hmm. No one knew. No one ex- what knew what to expect from him this season. Yep. Um, because, you know, when you have a year like he did last year with the couple of game, few games he pitched last year, you never know what he's going to do. Suffers from anxiety and mental mental. Uh, yeah, there's, mental a, there's, a, lot going, right there's there, a lot so. going on. Um, obviously. Ha- happy to see him get a, yeah. a win to start yeah. the season out and, and do a it was nice good. job. They, they did the, they're, playing, they're playing well. Yep. Uh, still trying to get the bats going. Um, I know you're not oh, a fan I'm of jumping. that right now. I'm jumping. <laughs> I'm, jumping. Um, I'm jumping at it right now. I uh, launched it on Twitter yesterday, so we'll continue. But uh, Hanley looks like he's starting to heat up, which is good. But you know that's probably not going to last for a while. Uh, a motivated a long Hanley time. is a good Hanley. Right, right. I, I, I like. I like. What, I mean, I'm not a big Hanley fan. Oh um, yeah. Um, that's all right. I mean, I, I, We're I uh, all friends here. Yeah. 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 Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No, but I, I feel like, uh, I feel like every time he steps up to the bat, it's either you're gonna get a big hit from him or you're gonna get a strikeout. It's like yeah. almost watching Aaron Judge on being a Yankees fan and watching Aaron Judge, yeah. um, or now John Carl Stanton too. Um, that is but, insane, by the way. But uh, still, still waiting for the bat to get going. Um, Xander is hot right now. Mm-hmm. But we're still waiting. Everybody's still sitting on the edge of their seat, waiting for Mookie to get his back going again. Mm-hmm. Um, ben Intendi's hot right now. So the and I mean the bullpen. The bullpen has there. There are a few relief pitchers that have been outstanding, and then there's some that haven't been too great. <laughs> haven't been what we've wanted to see. Does he have glasses? <laughs> Sometimes wears a wig on the on the other shows. Mm-hmm. Um, 
So we can call him Jay Kelly, or if that gives too much away, <laughs> Joe K. <laughs> 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 um, but you know they've they've battled through, they've survived, they've gone undefeated since the first game of the season. So there's not a lot to complain about. Triple A teams. Um, go ahead, Phil. No, I mean, any, yeah. That, do you have any, uh, anything play, to add? Uh, not to borrow our uh, Shaughnessy term, but yeah, tomato can teams. It is but, tomatoes. But I mean, rotten to act, tomatoes. To act, well, yeah, sure. <laughs> but to echo the point Tom was making, yeah, it's it's been fun. Like, yeah, the, what are they seven and one or six and one right yeah. now? They are six and one right now. Yeah, yes. He had an yes. exciting game yesterday. They went on forever, but they finally got one out out of a. And Hanley, yeah, Hanley, that guy. I'm ex- when Hanley gets going, I'm excited because same here. Because how can you not? Cause right. Because you know you know he's gonna come up big in every yeah. single game he plays. Yeah. And it, like like you were saying, Nick, a motivated Hanley is, uh, is a, definitely a good Hanley. Yeah, good Hanley. We even got Hanley playing first base this season, guys. Well, yeah. We, Holy we smokes! Playing, well, he was he playing, brought his glove to spring training. But he was playing well last uh, season. He, he certainly did only, when yeah, he's but he been was, fine he with his glove the, out there. He was saying throughout the off season that he was, didn't want to play first base. <laughs> so I mean, <laughs> something yeah. something changed that yeah. where where we probably won't know about it. Alex Cora. No, and that's actually. And I'm a big fan. Like Cora, I'm a clubhouse. big fan of the move. I'm a big fan of the move. I mean, yeah. again, can we? I mean, it, look at all the look at all the coaches that we have right now, on the staff on Is on the New show? England teams, and it's special it's, assistant. It's, yeah, yeah. We got yeah. we got Cora coaching Red Sox, which yeah. is looking like it was a good idea. Yeah. Uh, Bruce Cassidy coaching the Bruins, looking like a great idea now. Or it been it looks it's been a good idea since the start since they brought him up brought Brad him in. Stevens of course and then has Brad Stevens has been outstanding since yeah. he came on to the Celtics and I won't bring up the other one because I know you're still sour <laughs> about that. But um, still making moves. But I mean, even, and I know you're not a fan of this guy either. But JBJ came up big yesterday to help the Red Sox pull out the he win. He actually did. He did. So I mean, and I'm a fan of. I like him a lot. But I, I, but I feel bad, and I understand. And it's criticism is justified. Right. But he can go. Yeah, he can be ice cold sometimes. But he still, he can never. He's never a defensive liability. That is, if there's one thing I know that that's my big thing I give him. Yeah, I mean you can't. I mean I know maybe that's not a lot to hang your hat on, but but it it, 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 it yeah. I, I mean know. you look at the outfield that you, the Red Sox have, and you can't find a better no. chemistry other than like the Bergeron, Marchand, and Pasta. Their honest. outfield, their the outfield is a strength. I will say that. Um, Yes, going back to the jet. I have to. I have to get it off my system. <laughs> Release him, please. Oh. I'm so done with Jackie Bradley. And you know what? He got that hit because I called him out yesterday. I know it. I know it 100%. Sure, he is a defensive replacement. That's all he is. Your best team that you can put out there that can win you games has Martinez in left, Benny in center, Mookie in right, Moreland at first, Hanley at DH. Oh. My thought. That I, I mean. Now here's the thing: what I've seen from Alex Cora so far, and he's playing the whole. Let's do a nice rotation, everybody, so we're all happy here. You have Mart. So far this season, Martinez has sat a game. Betts has sat a game. Uh, Moreland sat multiple times. Hanley sat a game. Devers has been out. Bogart well, sat a game. I- all everybody's. Everybody's been played, basically. The like, one that again, hasn't been have... played as much as Swihart, and I still want to see some of what he does, but he doesn't really have a spot. No, the, That's like, the because it, thing. and it comes down. I mean, baseball is a tough sport where when you have a lot of depth, it's like, well, what do we do? Right. We can't because with the team that the Red Sox have defensively, it's really, 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 Def- really tough to put somebody in. Outfield defense is a strength. What I'm concerned with here is infield defense. Devers looks like a beached whale at third base, and I'm concerned about that. I didn't like Devers at third base last year. Nunez has the bad knee at second. He has Mm -hmm. very limited range. And then you have Hanley at first, whether that's a good thing or a bad thing. Well, what are your thoughts on uh, which, when they showed him on TV yesterday in opening day, um, Pedroia? What are your thoughts on because when's it, what's his timetable? And I, he comes I'm early back May, in May. Early May. Because I was like, um, oh yeah, he's still with the team. So he is to me an afterthought, weirdly. He is an afterthought, and, and he's somebody that I really I think you know my feelings on what Pedroy was. I was a big fan of his when mm. he came up. The laser show is out, folks. Yeah. It's out. The laser show is gone. The laser show with the glove is still there. Right. 
Do you think he still has? The, I think he still has the glove. His oh, glove he showed it last year. Yeah. His yeah, glove is yeah. fantastic. He showed it last. Like, I'm not going to take that away from him. No, but he can't really like physically. I don't think Pedro is worth the contract that he has right now. Yeah. They get, he's still wrapped in for another five years. I think it's like $125 million or something on his wow. deal that he's got. Well, he's, don't bring that up to Jason. Nor can Jason. Jason likes he, to draw. No, he does not. Oh, he's, he does uh, not. Well, he's, uh, he's, okay. he's had enough of them. At least. Well, a lot of he's people, when I wear my hat and everything... I think I look like Dustin Pedroia, and I always tell people I'm not bald. Yeah, you, well, so. you just just shave, keep it shaved, and take it. <laughs> just go with I'm it. Yeah, better yeah. looking Dustin Pedroia. Hey, DP, mm-hmm. like, hey, what's up? Yeah. Um, but overall, my thoughts here in the team is I don't really have one right now, is because it's, like it's still it's early. Only eight it's only games, it's, as Dan Shaughnessy loves to say, the tomato, tomato cans. cans. We got it nice it and early. What a start! If they're not. Uh, well, wait, wait a minute. Well, we're we have, games against next, Tampa. Next we have week. a we have a big we have a big uh, two games uh, matchup Tampa, coming up this weekend. Three games, so four, five. Well, there's just, ten games. If we're not nine and one by Sunday, <laughs> I'm going to be disappointed. Well, like Tom was saying, we have like this weekend is a big weekend. The Yankees, and then we have Baltimore, right? So Tuesday is really, in my eyes, when the season starts. Yeah. That's when the Red Sox play the Yankees. Legit con- competition. Yeah, it's going to be. We either so, we'll get crushed in the first game. Or get, we'll get, and we might get our we might get our butts kicked well, on that game. And, and it'll, we might. It'll be a good litmus test. Man. But this, the, but I mean, with the tomato can teams, it's a good. You it's a good way. Them. It's a well, you got to beat them, but it's a good yeah. way to say, hey guys, let's wake up those bats yeah, because yeah. we got a big team coming in. Yeah. Like, we need to start getting these bats going, but um, I mean, I I still, I mean, my opinion on uh, Jackie Bradley is still, we need to keep him until I see JD Martinez in the outfield, and see how he does with Mookie and Ben. Oh, but we're gonna have Bradley for a while. You're gonna have Bradley. I I, I just needed to get that off. Well, no, I know, but I, get it, but I, I mean, here. but if we do have JD Martinez. I, what's J.D. Martinez needs to hit the ball, and he hasn't hit sure. the ball at all. Right. They just signed him to a big contract, and he's not getting the job done. He, he, he had the game on the yesterday, line yesterday yeah. in the ninth, and he grounds yeah. into a double play. Like, Which yes, I understand. It, it was pretty was. hilarious. It was just in a weird cosmic, you know. So we need to see production from him, sure, and he yeah. needs to start getting it because here's a guy in 2013 that was released from the Houston Astros. Yeah. He rejuvenized his career when he went with the Tigers. So we need to see J.D. Martinez, Tiger, Diamondback player. He has he has a good glove too. So I, again, I'd like to I want to see how that chemistry fits in with uh, yep. Mookie and Ben and before we say anything about yeah. Jackie. Now the bullpen you mentioned yeah. about our friend uh, Ricky Vaughn. I mean Joe yeah. Kelly, yeah. Um, wild thing. Who is the eighth inning guy right now for the Red Sox? There there, there isn't one. Yeah. There isn't, there isn't one. one. You, you can't, because with the way, I mean, again, the bats, they need to get the bats going. Otherwise, they're going to have trouble finding an eighth inning guy because, hey, guess what? Guys, we're going to be ending up going into the 10th, 11th <laughs> inning. We're going to need somebody good in the, coming out of the bullpen. Well, that's, that's a great point, too. Like, if you get the bats going a little bit, at least, like, if someone gives up a run or two, it isn't the end yeah, of the but, world. Well, I but the so- four runs? Yeah. I'm going to tell you. Mad. I thought, I thought the Sox were, were dead as a doornail yesterday. I, I did. Oh, yeah. I did sure. not see them coming back. Well, they had, now. what, three hits going into the night? They had three hits going into yeah. a freezing cold day at Fenway <laughs> yesterday at 40 degrees. And Hanley came through, got a big hit in the ninth, and then Bogarts tied the game, yep. and then Bradley grounds out. Yeah. Just have to put that out there. But he advanced the runner, I believe. No. He did? No, no, not I the thought ninth. he did. It was, oh, it was right. in the 12th right. when he hit the double. That, and, then oh, yeah. Vasquez and so that's when I tweeted on Twitter. I go, every, every, everybody gets lucky once in a while. Oh, no. Well, I mean, when you when you Tampa, you have you have uh, Jackie on third. Yeah. Yeah. You walk Mookie, <laughs> and then hoping takes, yeah. hoping to strike out or get Ben Intendi to ground out walked. or something, and and so their well, worst Mookie, case scenario. Mookie stole scenario. second. Yeah, they, they gave him, him second. Yeah, they gave yeah. it to him. And then they and Which then is stupid. Ben yeah. Intendi ended up fouling yeah. off like four, three or four balls, and then gets yeah. walked after yeah. going after starting one and two. Yeah. With the count, and then Hanley comes through and hits a line drive over the outfield right. because they were shallow. Yeah, I felt right. bad for that uh, Tampa Bay pitcher. I just mm. you can't. Yeah, how can you not? That's like the I feel biggest. bad for that team in general. Yeah, sure, <laughs> I, mean, I do. But I mean, it's kind of amazing that they are still like, oh, up by two. It's amazing they're eight. watching the Rays and there's no Longoria. Yeah. Well, they no haven't. Price. They haven't there's done no Crawford. All yeah. these guys that we've seen from years. If, if you think about it, though, no they haven't. After Joe Madden left and went to the Cubs, they haven't been that great. They no. were. They no. were. 
fairly good before. They actually gave some competition when he was manager, and yeah, now yeah. they got nothing. They, they're well, they not doing anything. World Series with them. In 08, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. don't forget that. And yeah. then he goes over to the Cubs and wins the World Series yeah. with the Cubs. <laughs> I mean, I think they could have put anyone there, but... Um, and he almost lost it for him, sure to be did. honest. Yeah. But, uh, I don't know. oh, I just want to go back to your point about Joe Kelly, and I understand... I mean, four runs, yeah. I mean, do you think that'll happen again, or do you think he's just like... I mean, he never really... Erratic like Joe. He's, he's erratic Joe. He's inconsistent. Yeah. He's inconsistent. Yeah, you, you, don't, you don't... He needs to understand that throwing 102 isn't as important as it is location. getting outs. Yeah, sure. Who the heck cares if you can reach 102 on a gun? Especially if you're a relief pitcher. If you're yeah. a starting pitcher, okay. Yeah. Right. So get your job done. I'd rather you throw 94. Locate. Yeah. Well, execute your pitches, and he can't do that. He He's got the have, flattest. He has the flattest 102 mile an hour fastball in baseball. He doesn't. It have, says hit me when you throw. He, he doesn't throws have it. a breaking ball either. Yeah. No, it really his, doesn't. His breaking ball. Well, he's got so like two pitches, right? so if you, I mean, that's why. He, that's probably why he throws 102 because if he can't get the breaking ball, then his fastball yeah. is the only pitch he's got, and if they can't hit it, then great. But if he can't keep in the strike zone, then. But it also, yeah, that, that's the thing. It's not <laughs> like it just was wildly outside of the strike zone. I mean, even if they make contact, make contact. Well, yeah. in the right. game against Miami, he got lucky with a couple of his strikeouts. Yeah. So. Oh, yeah, that's the, the batter just totally, yeah. Yeah. totally chase. Well, I don't know. We'll see. I hope. Very we quickly, to, yeah. we have like two minutes to go before oh, we hit the hour mark here on our show. <laughs> well. I just want to say quickly, the Pats offseason has been, in my eyes, the offseason of misery. Why? What's going on? Anybody have any idea what's going on with the Patriots? Because I can't figure it out yet. I just can't. Seems like a slight rebuilding. Slight, but why cutting so many of these? We got Brandon Cooks traded. We have Danny Amendola now in Miami Dolphin. We have Dion Lewis out of here. We have Malcolm Butler out of here. I don't feel all warm and fuzzy about the Patriots right now. But you also have Jeremy Hill. You have Rex. Burkhead. You do. I mean, like, I, I do, love Deion do, Lewis. Did, but... did they make you feel good, though? To me, no. no. But what did you know about Deion Lewis before you brought him in? Not much of anything. Yeah. I mean, the preseason stuff, you could see him in, it was pretty great. Yeah. But, I mean, do you, um, do you not think he could be replaced, in a way? Well, here's what I looked at from last year when, when the Patriots got rid of Blunt. Yeah. Um, Who ran down they, their throat. They kind of missed him. Yeah, of course they did. They missed him because their big, ba- their big guy... Who was who was that accounted for? Really, Burkhead sometimes or? Yeah. Um, well, by committee, they really didn't have like. They a didn't really they have the do. bruiser there from yeah. stuff. So you know what? It's not just about the system. It's you know some of these players have legitimate talent. Yeah. But that I they think, just let and know. I think that's why they brought in Jeremy Hill because yeah. they realized, hey, Jeremy Hill is great. We need okay. another Legarrette Blunt, and he's Jeremy Hill is a big body. But that he's also can, a speedster, isn't he? Right, he can run the ball. Yeah. He can run the ball. Well, down you're the making field. me feel better about things <laughs> than now. No, but that is like now, no one's talking about Jeremy Hill. That is the kind of thing that kind the of the replacement, under the radar. I guess. Right. Yeah, that is under the radar. The replacement, no really I guess, from Malcolm that. Butler is now Jason McCourty. Jason and McCourty. I, I like that. I like that. The brothers on the brothers there. I think that's going to be huge. I think that's nice. But I'm with you. I think he was out. I mean, obviously he was out because of uh, the game we shall not mention. Yeah. But, um, yeah, but I, I kind of, I'm with you on that. I, I mean, defense is where they needed. But they added Claiborne, yeah. uh, who is an, a really great ed, yeah. edge rusher. And they added, uh, who's the guy from uh, Cleveland? Or no, who they added? Um, they did add somebody from Cleveland. They, I forget they've added, like, now. they have, I, I will grant you, it, it feels like they've done nothing. But there are a lot of things that they've done that seem to have enhanced. The big, the big yeah. loss of the whole offseason, in my eyes, is Nate Soldier. Yeah. Yeah. Who's yeah. the left tackle? That's uh, and Lowaddle. Uh, yeah. Maybe. Yeah. I mean. Yeah. Well, they also just who they get from? Uh, they got uh, a guy from Baltimore. Yes. Picked up. Um, Ola not, something. Yes. Yes. It's not a bad. But that's one thing that you have a 41-year-old Tom Brady next year. Yeah. You need good line protection. And the best thing is that Skarnecki is back for next year. Yeah. So that helps. But how many more years is that going to? I mean, without Skarnecki... <laughs> how many just... times is he going to retire? That's yeah. right. Well, he'll, so, probably, he'll probably retire the same time Brady and Belichick sure. do. That, that's what I'm feeling, too. So, Where he just said, <laughs> please. I do have to please say one thing. <laughs> I know I've been all high and mighty in saying that Brady's going to play till he's 45. I hope he doesn't. I think he's only got two years left. I I'm going to be more, I'm gonna be more year, to be even keel here with what I say it. This year could be his last after watching the documentary and stuff that he did and hearing from a couple other people. This could be it. 
you know, but if they win, I think if they win the Super Bowl this upcoming year, goodbye. Yeah, you should. Most likely yeah. retire on top but of the But if mountain. he doesn't, yeah. then he might feel motivated to come back for one more year. I mean. Well, after what happened this past season, I think he's going to have plenty of motivation to yeah. finish on top. And I, 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 I will tell you this right out. now. I don't know what's going on with the chemistry and stuff with the team, but Brady and Gronk, they just don't see eye to eye to Belichick right now. So that's a big issue, I think, right now. They say it's water under the bridge, but that's something to look at here because oh, those two guys, I think, have pretty much had it with Belichick. I think they're. All, I think it's going to be a real problem. Yep. I think that that's what lost you the Super Bowl. Like people I'm didn't know what agree. was happening. No. Like I like. I think Malcolm Butler out the there team. wins the Super Bowl. I do. Yeah, I mean, I maybe and you, not necessarily just for the talent, but for the sake of like, what is going on here? Yep. Like, what is, do people and know? And we still don't know the answer. No, we don't. Eh. And we were and we like when we did of it. when we did the show before the Super Bowl too. We were saying, well, there's, it's going to be a defensive superhero, and there mm-hmm. wasn't one because we were missing the biggest defense. They were missing the biggest defensive. I think the defense side. was in a state of shock because oh, they I saw definitely. they saw a whole game plan change yeah. because of one player being up. Well, yeah. I mean, they're also too like. Like I said before the, the show that we did before the Super Bowl, you have a quarterback, you're playing against a quarterback that you just played against a similar style of quarterback that you almost lost to. You should have made a game plan, whether you have all your star players or not, yep. a game plan where you would have been able to beat the first quarterback anyway, and now you can use it to beat the quarterback in the Super Bowl, and I didn't see that whatsoever. No, no I didn't either. Any final thoughts, guys, before we wrap up our jam-packed one-hour edition of Face to Facts today? Looking forward to playoff basketball. Playoff hockey. Let's we'll go. Go. go Masters. We've got the Masters tournament. Oh, yeah, that's right. On too. You have a mentor. Love seeing Tiger Woods back on the, yeah, back on the right. up he and up. Yeah, that's And you, he we is. have a local, well, not, low, not from North Reading or Reading, but someone from the generator. I think he's from Medford and old, or a firefighter from, I forget, they did a story firefighter on Firefighter from... Um, or like a reserve firefighter who's playing in the Masters, I yeah. believe. And, you know, we, the like, how many people play in that Masters? Like a whole bunch. It's a bunch. Yeah. yeah. I know right but now Jordan kind of Spieth has the lead. Yeah. But oh, it, really? it, it, it's, yes, folks, it's Friday. Sorry, that's when we did our show. Yeah. You can figure it out then. White guys talk and yeah. go. Exactly. Well, well <laughs> and, and Tiger, Tiger <laughs> fin- went down one over on, and ended up finishing one Tiger over. Tiger did on not the have day, a very so. good Thursday, I will mm-hmm. say that. Is but he back he, in form? Is he like? I think so. Yeah. I he, think he's he pretty finished, back. He finished at one over, so I feel like oh, he, he finished at one back. over yeah. yesterday. He started like the first five holes. He went one over, so I think with that being said, I think he could have a very good weekend. Well, make for lo- a good weekend. Yeah, I would love to see him. I back would really like to see of that. Of course. Too. Well, folks, we hope you have a great weekend, and we will see you again to talk more about playoff hockey, playoff basketball, more Red Sox and the lovely soap opera of the New England Patriots this offseason. <laughs> As the world turns, I am Nick Face. We will see you next time on Face the Facts. Goodbye. <laughs>